Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Canaan Baptist Church Virtual Sunday School one more time. It's a blessing that the Lord has allowed us this opportunity. You know, we can be shut in from each other, but you know, you, we, 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 we can always find an opportunity to give each other the word. And I think it was last week our minister told us that, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you sit down to your lesson, grab somebody that's and bring them in there with you. Grab somebody that's in your household and bring them in there with you. Get on the phone and say, you know, that old Mr. Heron might be teaching today, or whoever might be teaching today. Just tell somebody to join in on the word. So we can't be physically with each other, but spiritually, let's stay in the word. Let's stay in the word. So we need that in these trying times. First, give an honor to God, who's the head of my life. To Bishop Harris, the pastor of this great church, to these ministers and brothers and sisters, and these teachers of God's precious word. And Brother Golden, I said brother, but we got to give him a special thing. He won't make us look and sound so good. Takes a lot to put these on. Take a lot of time. But when you love God and you love teaching God's word, you will find the time to do the right thing. Amen. Jesus keep me Thank you for health and Lord we thank you for strength sometimes Lord we don't feel like we have the strength that we should have to continue this life and to continue it in your way but Lord all we have to do is just continue to look unto you and call upon your strength and your power and your glory and Lord we'll be able to do all the things that you call us to do Lord we ask for a blessing for all those that's Go through this COVID-19 sickness out there, Lord. We ask for a blessing for those that have lost families to it. And those that are going through the sickness right now, Lord. Just touch us, Lord, and strengthen us, Lord. And let us realize that we are not going through anything 
that's greater than you. Lord, let us just stay in your will and stay in your way. But bless us, Lord, and keep us is our prayer. Yes. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Again, good morning. Another great lesson this morning. Another great teacher. Amen. So let, let's get ready to ride this thing again. Dr. Jack, come to us and teach us God's word. Give a hand. Give Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so very much. Mm. First, give an honor to God. Amen. Who is the core of my being. Well. Who is my beginning <laughs> and shall be my ending. Mm. Mm. Father, I love you and I praise your holy name. Yes, Lord. Giving thanks to Bishop Harris for allowing me to have the opportunity to speak. Yes, indeed. Mm. I'm honored to be a Sunday school teacher. Mm. And it's not something that I take lightly. Amen. Amen. Thank you to my family and to all the Sunday school teachers who are gathered here. It means a lot and it saves a lot. Amen. And it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> a day of sweetness, sugary. Kool-Aid sweet, as my kids used to say. Some Kool-Aid sweet. And to keep it on another little light note, say happy birthday to my biological daughter, Latoya, and to my spiritual daughter, Minister Michelle Boynes. Amen. 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 Father God, I come before you Nervous as always. Amen. I pray that you calm Jackie down Amen. so that your words can be heard, received, because acceptance is all that is needed. Father God, I thank you. Amen. I honor you. Yes. I praise you. Amen. And not only do I call out to you in a dire need, but every day, Amen. all day. And I thank you for any and all answers, whether I like them or I don't. I thank you for they are of your will. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Anticipating this lesson, as we continue to go deeper in our understanding of Jesus, we are reminded that Jesus is much more than a great teacher or a debater. He is also a compassionate friend. And in this lesson, we will understand that by and by. Mm -hmm. The topic of the lesson is Jesus' response to a dire need. The lesson text is in John 11, 1 through 16. Amen. Amen. We all know what that is about Lazarus. Mm -hmm. What I sometimes Sunday school lessons do take you in a, di a little different direction, and I wanted to go through the scripture and break them down. Mm -hmm. And I'm trusting that as we break it down, we have a a different understanding. Because it's something that once you learn the word, you never forget it. Amen. Nobody can talk you out of it because it's the word. And nobody can change it. Amen? Amen. The golden text for today is our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Hmm. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And the scriptures, if we can read together, starting John 11 with 1 through 16. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, 
the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that said he to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve days in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend lies asleep, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he be sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them, Lame, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there, to the intent he may leave. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Amen. <laughs> Preparing to teach the lesson today to observe Jesus' compassion and ready willingness to serve others. Our principle to understand Jesus' response to the dire need of his friends. The application to emulate Jesus' deeds of love and compassion for the glory of God. The introduction to the lesson. The longer we live, the more we realize that life is filled with many unexpected twists and turns. How can a loving God allow grief and tragedy in the lives of his followers. Hmm. So when we go back over to John 11, 1, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Now I want to go on and do Verses 1, 2, and 3. So I'll go on with 2. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ornament and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now a certain man was sick. This begins perhaps the most remarkable miracle Jesus performed. One might say that it is foolish to think that one miracle is more difficult than another. Amen? Mm -hmm. But is it? Hmm. Not for Jesus. You know, who, who all can we think of. Well, first, let me go back to dire need, to understand what dire means. It's when it's uh, used as an adjective, it means causing or involving great fear or suffering, such, such as misfortune, trouble, urgent, or desperate. Desperate is a key word. 
And I want to think about the sisters may have been a little fearful of dire need. That's what they thought. This is why I have to call on Jesus, who I know, to help my brother who is sick. Lazarus of Bethany. Lazarus means God is my help. Lazarus, Mary, and her sister Martha. Jesus had a close relationship with his family. When Lazarus was sick, it was natural for them to bring their need, their dire need, to Jesus. It was expected that if he miraculously met the needs of so many others, he would meet their needs also. Surely you've had somebody that has been doing a lot of things for a lot of other people. So when it came to your turn, you expected the same thing from them. Does it always happen? No. But there is someone you can call on. And his name is Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Then it goes on, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. So, who do you call on when you're sick? Who do you call on when your child is sick? Who do you call on when the doctor, the man doctor, tells you there is no hope? Mm -hmm. Who do you call on? I'm in a dying need. Who do I call on My Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hmm. Lord, behold, who he whom you love is sick. Mary and Martha did not specifically ask Jesus to come and heal Lazarus. They felt that they did not need to, that it was enough to simply tell Jesus what the problem was. Mm -hmm. He already know. He already know what's going on. But it's nothing like calling out to him. Please, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Please come, Father God. Now, you know, the love of Jesus does not separate us from the common necessities and informations of human life. Men of God are still men. We still get sick. That's not going to change. In verses 4 through 6, Jesus responds with a delay. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. There's something. I'm calling on you. I'm waiting on you. You got the word. But the power of Jesus. Two more days. Two more days. Two more days. This sickness is not unto death. Lazarus was already dead when Jesus said this. But he knew the end result would be the glory of God. How many of us actually, well, now in this part of our lives, we do. But there may have been a time when things happened. Lord, why? Did we ever look that the glory 
that there was some glory in this? You know, I, I say glory be to God. You know, something happens, glory be to God. One of my co-workers said that one day. She said, well, I'm just saying glory be to God. And I just looked at her because she didn't understand that what she was saying. She did not understand that she had some power. But she just didn't know what to do with it. Because she didn't really understand. Hmm. This sickness is not unto death. Jesus knew that the events recorded in this chapter would set the religious leaders in determination to kill Jesus. This meant the end result would be that the Son of God may be glorified in his death and his coming again. The only right understanding of this answer and our Lord's would hold proceeding here is that he knew and foresaw all from the first, from the beginning. He knew that we would have sickness, and sickness would lead into death. But ultimately, the glory of God would be rewarded. So the Lord speaks of things not as they seem to be, nor even as they are in the present moment, but as they shall be in the long run. I want it now, I want it right now, and if you don't give it to me right now, I'm not going to say glory be to God. But as we stand as Christians, we know everything that happens in our life, we still have to give it to God. The glory is coming. We may not see it today. We may not see it tomorrow. But glory be to God is the call. Hmm. Now, Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. John reminds us that Jesus did generally love these sisters and their brother. It was an important reminder showing that a testing of their faith was not a denial of his love. Hmm. The separate mention of three people is probably meant to be to put some stress on Jesus' affection for each other individually. He did not simply love the family. He loved Martha, he loved Mary, and he loved Lazarus. And just to add to that, he loves you and he loves me. Hmm individually man isn't that something he loves me but he has room for everybody else too there is no jealousy to be had because he loves us individually the individual love of Jesus come towards things that is especially significant when we think of how we are so different in our temperament and the situations of our lives. But individually, he loves us. Now, going on to break the scripture down, where he say, the words say he stayed two more days. It seems strange that Jesus did not immediately act upon this great need, this dire need. The delay was probably mystifying to the disciples and agonizing to Mary and Martha. <laughs> Jesus deliberately waited to bring Lazarus back from the dead until he had been in the tomb four days. Now grief reaches its height on the third day, but for three days the spirit it hoovers over the tomb. Mm -hmm. If by chance it may return to the body, I'm talking about the spirit now, but when it sees the fashion of the continents change, it retires and abandons the body. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking about the spirit has left the body. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus refused to grant wishes. 
And then he fulfills it after showing that he does things according to the timing and will of God, not man. I want it now. I want it right now. God says, and we take it for whatever we want to take it. But instead of just saying, glory be to God, your will shall be done. Mm, mm, mm. Now through his actions, Jesus demonstrated that his delays were not deniers. They would bring greater glory to God. What do you think that means? Hmm. He wasn't saying no. He was just saying, calm down. Not yet. He more or less wanted them to see the bigger picture. The bigger mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. Because it was coming. Mm -hmm. It was coming. Through his actions, Jesus demonstrated that his delays, again, was not deniers, but they would bring greater glory to God. Mm -hmm. The bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I like that. The mm -hmm. bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Now, in verses 7 through 10, Jesus courageously decides to go to Judah and Jer Jerusalem. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let's go to the J Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you going there again? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, are there not 12 days, 12 hours yeah. in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. How many of you have been walking in the dark and ran into something? But how many of you, the house is dark. But you know where everything is. I can walk from one end to the other without stumbling. That says something. So when you're walking with the Lord, that's how we are. And God knows everything that we need. And he knows when he's going to give it to us. Right now, Lord, maybe not. Will I wait, Lord? I will. How long, Lord? As long as it takes. I trust you, Lord. <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. Are there not 12 hours in the day? Jesus' disciples were shocked that he would return to this region when he was when he was a wanted man there. You know, he had, they had a bounty out for him. They was going to stone him. Jesus' response was saying that he still had work to do. Would I be willing to go back to a place where I knew that someone was going to hurt me? I'm just being honest. No. 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 I may look around the curve and see what's going on. And I may send somebody, but I'm not going. But that's not how Jesus is. He waited his time. I know the sisters want me to come and do something for Lazarus. I know they want me to heal their brother. But not yet. Not yet. He still had work to do. The 12 hours were a figurative way to speak of the time allotted by God the Father for the earthly work of Jesus. So meaning there is no time when it comes to Jesus. It's his time, the will of God. Hmm. There are many practical applications of this wise statement. Nothing can shorten our time. There is enough time for everything that needs to be done. We only have that time, so it must not be wasted. Jesus is saying that a man must finish the day's work within the day, for the night cometh 
when work is in. Mm -hmm. But there are but 12 hours in the day, and it will be sunset before you dream of it. Get done what God has sent you here to do. If you are aware of your calling, work in your calling. Don't work in somebody else's calling because that's not going to work. Work in your calling. You may not see the rewards that you want right now, but in God's time, in God's time, you will. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble. During these hours, no harm could come to Jesus and his disciples. They had to work before the night of Jesus' passion. Oh, amen. You have a certain time of the day that you do something? You know, I try to do... My, my, I, I always try to give myself an hour to just have no interruptions that I just want to study. Mm -hmm. Does that always happen like that? Mm -hmm. No, but I try to set that time up for me and God because he has an individual love for me and my one hour love showing back to him is my individual love. Lord, I love you, not just for this one hour, but this is my designated time. Sometimes my hour go longer. I have been just studying and just break down crying because of the will of God that has been going on in my life. Look where he has brought me from. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I cannot worry about tomorrow. I plan for tomorrow, but I don't worry about it anymore. I do not worry. I just plan. Amen. Amen. Now Jesus tells them plainly of Nazareth's death in verses 11 through 15. These things he said, and that, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples says, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking a rest and sleep, a nap. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. What do you think that means? I'm glad. Well, um, looking back at last week's lesson, uh, when you had all of these unbelieving folks that were around, these Sadducees and Pharisees, they wanted to see, or when Jesus told them who he was, spoke of his deity, they did not believe him. They wanted to stone him and kill him. So now he, fast forward to this week's lesson, he's given time for, for them to probably consider the things that he said to them the last time yes. he was there before they wanted to stone yes. him. And so now when they're considering, he knows that if he allows a Lazarus to, to die, in a number of days to pass by, their physical belief is going to tell them, oh, well, he's dead, and therefore he can't nobody do nothing for this man. But now that he allowed that time to pass by, and now he arrives, and now he does the thing that only God can do. Mm -hmm. They have no choice but to believe it as it is. Yes. So Lazarus is dead. And I am glad. Mm -hmm. Jesus could be glad, even in the death of a dear friend, because he was certain of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We see at the end of the events of this chapter that grief was comforted, life was restored, many more believed, mm -hmm. and the necessary death 
of Jesus was set in motion. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. And the necessary death of Jesus was set in motion at this point. And all of these were reasons to be glad. Be glad. Uh, we, we wish that Jesus didn't have to die. But we're glad that he did because we are here. Yes. He saved a wretch like me. Mm -hmm. But it also reinforces the fact mm -hmm. that when he tells us in his word that we shall never die, uh -huh. that kind of like tells us, okay, well, through this demonstration of, of what he did with Lazarus' life on this side, and was able to just go and call him and bring him back from death. So mankind thought. But now that he's gone, he's telling us that I go and I prepare for faith for you to the other side where you, there you may be also. That should, that should instill and tell us right now, we should be jumping up now rejoicing and saying, if my father who was here told me that there's a place on the other side that he's going he's to prepare for me, he's going to get ready, I, I shouldn't believe nothing but what he told me. Because he's already showed it to me on this side of the, through this man's life. That everything that he said in his word right now is nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So we may learn that he often permits us to pass until darkness, mm -hmm. more darkness, and deeper mysteries of pain. Wow. In order that we may prove more perfectly his power. Now the other three was, nevertheless, let us go to him. Now, as Jesus was preparing, and they said the day, and the day after Lazarus died, he came to Bethany three days after, and it appeared that Lazarus had been buried about four days and that he had been put in the grave the day or day after he died. Hmm. And all these were reasons to be glad. In verse 16, I wanted to talk about Thomas' bold faith. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Hmm. Thomas, who is called the twin, church traditions say that Thomas was called the twin because he looked like Jesus, putting him at a special risk. If any among the disciples of Jesus were potential targets of persecution, it would be the one who looked like Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. I guess when I was reading, I was like, really? Okay. Doubting Thomas. And then it breaks down to, let us also go that we may die with him. Thomas was willing to go with Jesus even if it meant dying with him. He may commit this commitment without much understanding of a promise of being alive again, the resurrection. Who would go with someone thinking they're going to die and I'll probably die with them? Not to those that believe. I believe that, that Jesus was comparing the disciples. Mm -hmm. so that when the time comes that yeah. he is yes. put to death yes, sir. they can carry on and this alone will help them to understand that what he's saying about himself about God is true there's no doubt they won't have any more doubt in their mind because some of them still had a little doubt there mm -hmm. but he wanted to show them and, and give God the glory and also glorify him as well at the same time by raising Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. And that's why he tarried over here so long and then decided to come over here and, and see what was going on with, with Mary and Martha. And then brought Lazarus 
four, mm -hmm. so that they all can see that, hey, here's a man that lay dead for four days. Four days. No one has that authority or right to bring him back to life like mm -hmm. that, unless he is who he said he is. He said he is the no, I no, am. No spirit, no ghost. Mm -hmm. I'm going no. back from the dead. That's the four dead dead. The glorified of Jesus. The power of Jesus. But that one thing about Thomas is that regardless, he remained loyal. Hmm. And was willing to follow Jesus no matter the cost. Hmm. I asked myself this question. And I asked you to check your heart. Am I? Are you? Willing, loyal, and willing to follow Jesus no matter the cost. I think in many ways we all are. Because if you take take for take use the analogy of let's say the armed forces right now. Uh, a soldier joins in the armed forces and he gives uh, wholeheartedly, totally, to say that he's going to go and fight and defend his country, even if it meant for him to go to war and lose his life. Sometimes that happens. Uh, God forbid, in many cases, that's not the case. But he's willing to do that. And I think that's all predicated on the cause. If you're following somebody for a great cause, in this case, Jesus is trying to show them that uh, his cause, his purpose, the purpose of being about his father's business, there's no other greater cause that you can that you can follow, and he's trying to show them just that very thing. And, and I think uh, in a kind of an awkward way, Thomas got it. Mm -hmm. uh, he probably didn't know how he got it or he came there, but he just had a feeling within himself that this is the right thing to do. Yeah. So that's why I think he said, I'm, "Let's go." Yeah, because he did doubt him. And you know, uh, I think that's a point we get to by going through things in our life, and mm -hmm. it don't necessarily mean years, because some folks get it sooner than others. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the more we go through, the more we bring us through, mm -hmm. the, the more we, 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 we can see it and, and realize that he is in charge of all of this. And, and some of us go through this and don't even see it for years. So that's the reason I say that it don't matter the years, but the, but the circumstances that we go through in the time that he bring us out of this. I think that, that's what makes us stronger in our faith with him. Because we know, the Lord knows he brought me through so much. Yes. And the oldest know that it wasn't because of me. Amen. And the more he does that, you know, the more you realize that, that this is his. Mm -hmm. That's when I always say, no matter the situation, there's got to be some good in it somewhere. So dig that out. Because he put that there as well. That's yes. Yes. And that helped you through the bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, um, we have to remember too that Jesus was teaching lessons. When he was teaching mm -hmm. and preaching, it was to strengthen the disciples' faith, to let them know that I am going to have to leave. And this is one reason why he, he waited also was to draw the biggest crowd that he could ever draw. Because remember, this was the, the biggest mirror. The biggest one. The mm -hmm. biggest one. And he wanted to let you know that everything I've been preaching and teaching you all, this is going to be like the epiphany of it. I'm going to, no, not only do I forgive sins, I have the power and authority to forgive sin, I can raise the dead. So when I'm saying that when you leave here, you're going to an eternal life. You're still coming with me. So I'm going to show you I have the power to raise the dead. So he built the crowd so that they could see. And it was all about strengthening our faith wall because now, today, we walk by faith yes, and not by sight based on what we have learned here in the Bible. So when I follow you, I'm sorry. One, 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 one. It, it amazed me that as much as Jesus talked while he was here, that he still had to leave some here for them to understand. Mm -hmm. Because they still didn't understand. Mm -hmm. now, he knew that. They took the Holy Spirit coming mm -hmm. after he left for them to fully understand. And all they saw and all that he did. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew that. And that's how well he take care of us. He gives us everything we need mm -hmm. for every situation yeah. for our entire life. Mm -hmm. And he knew and it was going to take the Holy Spirit to finish that. And yet there's still something on this earth that do not get it. Do, don't get it. Don't get but it. it's put here. Yeah. And he gives us, you have a choice whether you believe it or not. It's not going to open your head or your heart and shove it in there. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes ma'am. <laughs>
as, as Pastor Jimmy was saying, I don't believe that a person on this earth don't believe that that's, that God had the power. It's one thing to believe, mm -hmm. but you got to know it. Mm -hmm. You have to know mm -hmm. it. You can believe anything you want, but if you don't know it, that's it don't do you no good. That's why. Right. That was why Jesus delayed coming. Mm -hmm. It all goes back to I say, if you saying back. I, I, I like the way Mary did with the wine. Mm -hmm. Mary was bold when she asked Jesus and told him about the wine. Uh -huh. She told him and walked on out. She, all, she knew. Mm -hmm. She knew the yeah. powers. Yeah. Now that was a time when I believed. But I know now. I and know. It don't matter to me. Who <laughs> oh, yes, I know. Oh, oh, so yes. that's a difference. Yeah, that's that's a difference in oh, believing and knowing. Oh, yes. yes. Do you know yes, what God can do? Sam, Sam. You don't know God. Right. Well, That's why he was telling the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. They didn't know him. They were hearing him, but they didn't know him. Mm -hmm. And that's why they could never believe the things that he was doing. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't, they didn't open up to know him. Mm -hmm. You have to open up to receive him. That's right. To know him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he let things come your way yes. to let you glorify That's right. That's right. you know what he has done That's right. to turn yes. you around. That's right. Mm -hmm. so you got to know it. Yes. And we know him. We know what he will and can do. It may not happen this minute. And it may not happen five minutes later. But we do know that the will of God shall prevail and the glory shall be to him. We say, I give you praise and honor. I glorify your holy name. Only those believers who know will say that, understand it. Yes, ma'am. Wherever you go, Father, I shall follow. Wherever you lead. I shall be there. If you turn around too fast, Lord, you're going to knock me down because I'm going to be right there. I love you and I praise you. I trust you. I trust the word of God. I trust it right now. I'm going to trust it tonight. And if it's of his will, when I wake up in the morning, I'm still going to be trusting yeah. him. Knowing that his will will be done. That the power of God, he shows the power all the time. Yes, yes. yes. all the time. Yes. When you think there is nothing else to be done. When you call on God in my dire need. The answer follows. There was a story I told once about I was going through a lot. I just didn't know what Jackie could do. But I got in the, not in my closet, but I had a long, when I was living in the apartments, the hallway, the walkway in my apartment, I laid down on that floor and I cried. But I just cried and I put it all out there. These are my dire needs, not no needs that I just want to do something, Lord, but this is what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. Father God, these are my dire needs. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them to you. I guarantee you, mm -hmm. I went to sleep in the midst of all that crime, but when I woke up, God had revealed through the Holy Spirit to me what that plan was for me to do. And that plan brought me out. The power of God? Yeah. I know about the power of God. And let me conclude with, with a prayer. Father God, we thank you. We ask that you create in us a clean and clear pathway of complete loyalty to you. Lead us, Father God. We ask that our friend, our brother Jesus the Christ, know that you will stumble sometimes and I they stumble sometimes, but not you, Father God. You would never stumble, but you would never give up. And you would continue to shine your will, your love upon us for others to see you in us. 
That is our prayer, Lord. We want someone, if it's only one, Lord, to see you in us. Father, we love you and we praise you. Amen, amen, amen. and amen.